morning, everyone. All right. Uh, so I am here to give you a little preview or a sneak peek into the future, and especially to you know, talk about how artificial intelligence could really improve operations and the guest experience. So I think there's, there's two sides to it. Um, what we want is, you know, come in as a little bit of an outsider and the CEO of Livet. We're the world's largest F&B design company. Um, we're all over the world, over 40 countries by now. We open approximately 1,000 experiences or restaurants uh, every year. So as we speak here, probably we'll be opening somewhere in the world. Um, focus primarily on F&B, but we work a lot with major hotel companies and how F&B can enhance their operations and their results. So I think uh, this is a very interesting slide because it's all about experience. And it's a world that we've heard a lot. It's all about experience. But really, consumers more and more are looking for experiences over things. And the new reality is really this, that if you think of the evolution of the hotel industry, uh, it's gone from we had a bunch of rooms and we had a space at the ground floor that we need to do something to, to more and more customers actually looking actively to what is the activation, how can I mingle with locals on the ground floor of the hotels, and therefore choosing where to stay. Um, so we work with all the major brands out there. We primarily work with private equity. When they acquire a brand, they hire us to turn it around and do a profitable exit. So we're much more about the business behind the business, looking into operations and efficiencies in restaurants to make them profitable. I happen to be an architect. We have a ton of those. So design comes as a bonus. Uh, we've opened over 13,000 restaurants across the world. So we should have learned a thing or two, and hopefully I can share a few insights. So most people come to us for restaurant design, but actually what is more important is what happens under the surface. It's how do you take the operational efficiencies, the, uh, the touch points, the development tools, the operations, how do you use the strategy to create the right F&B experiences in a space? And one of the points that I'm gonna to talk to you about today, it's technology. Technology is just a little piece of what we do, but it's a very important and relevant one. So this is me and my wife. Uh, we live in Stockholm. Uh, by a raise of hands, how many of you have been in Stockholm? Quite a few. I hope you were there in summer. I've heard it's the best day of the year. So lucky you. Uh, why is this important? It's important because um, Sweden has been ranked the number two most innovative country in the world, is the new Silicon Valley. So we have a huge amount of talent where we can deploy into our tech space and do innovations. And what was happening is that a lot of our large global clients, we were talking to them about innovation and creating the restaurant and the F&B experience of the future. But sometimes it was a complete disconnect. We were talking about artificial intelligence and predictive analysis, and they were saying, hey, Ben, don't take me wrong. We're already technological. We're rolling out Wi-Fi. So uh, ultimately, what we said is, if no one else is going to do it, we're going to do it ourselves. So as a design company, we said, OK, we're going to you know, uh, uh, put an investment package, and we're going to create our own brand where we can test anything and everything without having a client uh, to comply with. So the challenge we said was, how do we create a food and beverage concept where the guest experience and the operational efficiency were managed by artificial intelligence? And we set up this lab. Um, we opened the first one in Stockholm a year ago. We are uh, just signed a lease in downtown LA, so we're gonna do a 2.0 version um, in Los Angeles in Q1 where we're actually gonna be the ground floor of a hotel. Uh, and uh, what we wanted to do in this brief was we wanted to have, so Michelin star food. We wanted to have it in a fine dining environment. But at the same time, we wanted to have the speed and the throughput of a QSR. We also said that for us, CapEx was important. We wanted to have a tight footprint with a reduced CapEx, something that you all uh, recognize. 
Uh, we wanted to be able to hire staff without any previous food and beverage experience. Therefore, reduce the cost of labor. We wanted operational efficiency, staff flexibility, so any team member could walk any, work on any station. And ultimately, we wanted a seamless guest experience and having profit, profitable operation in a high cost labor market like Sweden. Sweden is the second most expensive country in the world after Norway. Our minimum wage hourly is $23. So when people get scared about 15 here, I would sign that off any day. Uh, so yes, this felt a little bit like a letter to Santa Claus. Um, but being in Sweden, we have some connections and uh, we know a couple of people. So this is actually the outcome. So we hired a Michelin star chef, Marco Bodone, to create the whole menu. We developed a ton of fine dining touch points. We are now able to do a transaction every 30 seconds, and it takes less than four minutes from the moment you order your food to you have paid, you have your glass of wine, and you have your food. We get 150 seats out of 3,000 square foot. And we were able to do this restaurant for $800,000 capex. The whole restaurant was actually built off-site. It was built in Spain, shipped in containers, and mounted on-site. We only hire students as team members, and we have no chefs nor cooks in the restaurant. In terms of efficiency, we measure guests per labor hour. So we add all the labor hours of the restaurant, including the dishwasher, and divide it by the number of guests. We serve over five guests per labor hour right now. We have a cross-training platform uh, that allows any team member to work on any station. And everything is driven by an AI environment. And the beautiful number at the bottom there is that we have a 35% ABDAR in a market like Sweden. So what does this look like? Uh, it's become viral. Everyone's talked about this. I've been asked to give keynotes all across the world, 12 places. Last uh, week I was in Zurich, European Food Service Summit, before that the UK restaurant conference. Next week I'm going to uh, Moscow, uh, Dubai is follow that, because no one's ever done it. Everyone talks about artificial intelligence, but no one's really be able to prove the results of it. And this is what it looks like. So it's not your uh, average McDonald's where you would expect with the through capacity that we have. It's a place where we on a fast casual operation actually sell 30 bottles of champagne any given Friday. It feels upscale, it's definitely different. It's something that uh, works not only in inline street but also as uh, lobby spaces for hotels to hang out. So what we do is our customers, the guests that walked in through the door, they don't know this is a lab. For everyone, it's just a restaurant. But we measure everything. The site is packed with all the sensors you can imagine. So we measure heat mapping, devices, RFID tags. We have all the metrics that you can imagine. And we measure that constantly. And the beautiful thing about this is that once we measure, we can track. And we can track how many of our customers walk by the street, how many have been there in real time, connected to weather conditions, to what happens in town in terms of events, et cetera. And that gives us enormous amount of data that we can handle. And why artificial intelligence? Why now? The amount of connections that we're doing here, we could not do it without the computing power that we now have. So it's really important that we're now able to do these things. We've been wanting to do these things for years. I've been in this industry for 20 years. But now, finally, we have the tools to do this and can connect in different layers. So we've done, uh, measured 1.8 million transactions, and we've done over 2,000 individual interviews with guests, not only to measure the operational efficiency, but especially the guest experience. The interesting thing with artificial intelligence is that it's really stupid in the beginning. It's not so intelligent. It just needs time, and it needs data. The more data we give it, the more intelligence it comes. On these graphics, you can actually see here on the left side the white line is the average guest check, and the purple line is the sales of alcohol. So you can see that over a period of nine months, the system starts changing and tweaking things, and the customers appreciate that. So this is on the experience side of things. To the right side of the screen, 
you have the cost of labor in white and the cost of product in red. So over time, systems get more and more intelligent and can really improve the performances of the restaurants. We also measure MPS, and this is the industry average in the US, and we are uh, very close to Chick-fil-A, who has the industry best NPS uh, in the market. So we have a great experience. And what I want to do now is really to share some insights. What are the things that you can take with you home or to your companies and implement? So the first one we did is, who is my guest? So we've developed a system where we can put a geofence on any location and track every phone that walks in and out of that location. So we could put a geofence on this room and understand where your phones live and where your phones work. This is a real example where we actually said, Intelligentsia Coffee, Shake Shack, Starbucks, and Sweet Greens, each on one column, and that was our assumption. We assumed that they share the same customer. We put geofence on all the US locations and track them, and you can clearly see that they're sharing the same customer. Not only we know the customer, but we can know where they are. So when a lot of brands say, well, I want to create a brand where locals hang out and mix with our guests because that's um, uh, how we want to position ourselves, this is a map of LA, and every red dot is a customer. So not only we can understand where are our core customers, where do they move, how do they move, but in this slide, we could even see in blue where they live and in green where they work. So depending if you want to have co-working spaces, you understand where your customers are. If you want to have co-living spaces, you know that. We can also do in real time tracking of five minutes working from my location. What is my capture rate? It's not a circle anymore. It's dynamic because that's how traffic works. We eat with our ears. Um, and what we did is we uh, developed a research with McDonald's where we took 25 uh, restaurants that we use as a test, and then 25 that we use as a benchmark. And what we did is we changed the music for just being popular music, music with Spotify 1000, to brand fit music. The increase in sales was 9.1%. If I deep dive into this, what you see here to, to the left of the screen is it's actually better to have no music than to have the music that does not fit the brand. And I'm not saying bad music. This was Spotify 1000, so the most popular songs on the radio. When you then turn that around into brand fit music, where music fits the personality of the brand, I know, anyone from W Hotels? No? Okay, W has done a great job in understanding this. Um, when you have brand fit music, 50% and 50% popular music, sales went up 1.2%. But really, when you went all in with brand fit music, sales went up 4.8%. And what you could do with music is that you really increase sales on the top margin products. If you can have your guests to stay longer, they consume desserts and shakes with your high margin elements in the menu. We've also done research with volume. And what we found out that when playing higher music, customers eat less healthy food. Very interesting. So this is an, an experiment we did in a restaurant that had burgers and salads. And we played music at 55 decibel and 70 decibel. The difference is 10% in increase of non-healthy food when the music is higher. Um, we have developed what we call the right vibe algorithm. And basically what we're doing is that we're measuring phones in real time. Most restaurants, more hotels, you program your music. For this day part, I'm going to play at 35 decibels. For this day part, I'm going to play at that decibels. But you know what? Lunch starts with one guest in your restaurants or your lobbies <coughs> and might end up with 3,000 because you have a whole plane coming in. So what we now do is that we have an algorithm that automatically and in real time changes the type of music you play, the pitch of the music you play, and the volume that you're playing, depending on how many phones you have in the store. And therefore, you can also trigger the fact that when you play familiar music, you're more aware of time and leave earlier. So if you want throughput, you play familiar music, the A side of the single. 
If you want people to linger and have an increased average guest check, you play the B side of the signal. We've also played with scent strategy. And the interesting fact was when we changed, the, our, our lab restaurant serves salads and pizzas. When we changed from wood fire oven scent to fresh basil scent, our salad sales went up 13%. So with scent, we could also trigger customer behavior. A lot of hotels are just a, a scent. I want everyone that comes to my hotel to feel at home. What we're proving here is that scent is a business driver. So understand what it can do to your customers. We have real-time light control. A lot of our customers really were telling us when we did the interviews that when it's really light outside, you don't want to go into a very dark environment. You feel like you're coming into a cave. But on the contrary, where it's very dark outside, you want to feel cozy. So we now change the light scenes dynamically in real time with sensors on the facade. We can now do location-based marketing. So knowing where our customers are, we could target that. We know where they order from, where they live. So you can really spend your dollars where your customers are. And even event-based marketing. So we can see and set up alerts if there's a clustering of guests in a certain arena or a concert or whatever that is, we can do that as well. We now have geofenced order uh, management. So you can order your food on the app. Uh, and you say, I'm going to pick it up in 15 minutes. And as you're walking out the door, your boss says, hey, I need to talk to you. So you know you're going to be delayed. What's going to happen with your pizza when it's been on the shelf for 15 minutes? Not good. So actually, what we do now is that we know it takes three minutes to cook the pizza. We only put it in the oven when you're 70 meters away from the restaurant. As you walk into the restaurant, it's smoking hot on the shelf, no matter if you're delayed. Uh, we are using technology to try behavior. And what we've learned is that we're a little bit like rabbits or animals. We love pushing buttons. So we work with a company called Flick, and we put a little badge, a little brass badge on the tables uh, with a button that looks like this, it's this small. And the badge says, press me for drinks. The uh, orders of drinks went up 100%. And the delta in the P mix went up 9%, the hours when we put the badge on the table. Everyone loves it. It's almost a competition. I take this round. No, you take the next round. Uh, we have predictive analysis. So what we can do is that understanding tomorrow it's Friday, it's going to rain. Uh, we have a concert in town. We have three cruise ships arriving to the harbor. We can understand how many dough balls you need but not only for the analysis of how much food you need in the inventory, but also for the staffing. On non-peak hours, you want to have flexible staffing. On peak hours, you want to have ACEs in their places. So we save a lot of labor. We've, of course, I guess you might be familiar with this, all the third-party delivery ordering tablets that you have to manually punch in. So we've now developed a system where all this is funneled directly into the back of house, into the KDS and the POS, so these screens don't exist anymore, and everything happens seamlessly. We also have automated table management. And this is interesting if you have lobbies or restaurants that serves as working areas, as breakfast, as lunch and dinner for different day parts. With the predictive analysis and the heat maps, we understand how our guest wants to sit. So the manager gets a, uh, uh, an alert before the day part of how the restaurant should be set up in terms of two tops, four tops, and six tops. So you can get more throughput and more efficiency, more butts in seats in the restaurants, and therefore improve the bottom line. What we say is that you know, AI could also be used for uh, inventory. So what we're doing with the predictive analysis is that the system is actually recognizing how if I'm going to sell 200 cans of beer tomorrow because it's Friday, I know how many beers I have in staff because they have RFID tags. And I can automatically order ahead of time so I never run out of stock. But also, I can manage my stock more efficiently. And finally, design matters. I know there's a lot of designers in the room. Um, so uh, you guys familiar with a company called Blaze Pizza? Yes. Brace of hands? Heard of it? Good. A lot of hands. So Blaze Pizza basically serves pizzas and salads, like we do in our lab. Their average uh, liquor sales is 2% of their P-mix. With the same product, same pricing, 
we are in our lab serving 21% liquor. No bar, no bartender. So just by what the way the restaurants are designed or your lobbies are designed, you can trigger different things. And the interesting, we always want to use design as a tool to a goal. What is it that we want to accomplish? Not just design a space because it's beautiful. It's what's the business behind this, the space and how do you design for that? The last thing is this pizza box. The first impression matters. So what we took is we took the same pizza, we put it in our box. This is our box. It's a black box, what you touch is silk. The friction when you open it is the same friction that you open an Apple product. Customers were willing to pay 27% more for the same food compared to regular pizza box. On top of that, people say, we're crazy, it costs over a dollar each box. Say, that's impossible. And what customers are doing is that actually, this box is on 80% of our Instagram feed. The best marketing ever. So design matters and first impression matters. The beauty of this and everything we do, it's all invisible to the guests. There's no technology between the guests and the experience, between the guests and the operations. So this is a back-end technology that we're using to enhance our restaurants' experiences and operations. With that, I want to thank you. Thank you, Matt.